Hello everybody, welcome out to the Dice Tower. Welcome back. My name is Chris Yee and I'm continuing my series Best in Theme. Uh, this is uh, this is my penultimate episode actually because I'm covering themes number four and number three. Number four is going to be travel and number three is fun dinosaurs. With that big caveat, fun dinosaurs. Uh, this is, uh, obviously you're catching all the themes now. You don't have to watch the uh, the top ten list if you want to just see what the themes are. But we did this as uh, the A team or top ten themes in board games, but if you want to watch that and dis and you'll see us discuss why we like these themes particularly, you discuss that more. Here I'm just going to be talking about the games that I feel like showcase and feature these themes really well. So let's go ahead and start with number four, as I said, travel. Travel is a fun theme, right? Oftentimes it involves maps, route connection, or going places, or feeling like you're kind of in a place. I, and I really like that, and so I. I uh, there's something about a nice, pleasant map on a board that I like a lot. Now, not all of these games have a map, uh, but that's also kind of why you'll see them later. I'm going to start with the game that I feel like does this theme so very well, and that is Airlines Europe. Airlines Europe, you are, you're not traveling, you're not travelers yourself, but you are companies building up uh, airways for people to travel on. I like the idea of the travel industry. There's a lot of fun logistics in there. And logistics might be a theme, you know, within this that you see. Airlines Europe is <laughs> so good, right? Stock, basic, basic stock kind of a company, or, or stocks per companies, and you're trying to have a really good portfolio of them. But I just like this idea of building these airways around Europe. I like that there's certain bonuses, that the airlines have different numbers of planes, so some are really easy to shoot up and have high value. But some of the smaller ones, you have to work really hard, so you're kind of taking a risk because no one owns a single airline. You know, anybody can build up any of them, and anybody can get shares of any of them. This is, I think, Alan Moon's best game. This is uh, Alan Moon, designer of Ticket to Ride. Speaking of Ticket to Ride, Pan Am. <laughs> gotcha. Pan Am, this is one of the Prospero Hall games that I, I really like a lot. This is a game of, uh, it's, in a lot of ways, it seems like it is similar feeling to Airlines Europe, uh, but this one is about the, the rise of the uh, you know uh, pandemonium Americanonium airline, uh, and it has a lot of distinctions from it. But you are building up indeed airlines across a map here as as such. But you're tr you are small airlines trying to get bought out by this rising mega giant Pan Am. That's a great way to approach this game, and so you are hoping that the routes that you place on the map get swallowed up because you get good payment for that. You could build more routes and say, hey, Pan Am, you're going you're gonna to buy this from us or what? I really like it. It's super good. Great presentation, great look and everything to it. Uh, so, yeah, Pan Am. Now let's talk about another great travel-themed game, Tokaido. Tokaido is about walking the, uh, I forget the name of the path, right? Is it Tokaido? Is that the name of the path? Traveling from uh, uh, the East Sea Road. And so you're traveling through Japan and you're tourists and you are just trying to uh, have the, the dopest vacation is basically what the theme is. And I like that so much. Uh, part of the reason I like travel games is because the idea of, hey, uh, I haven't flown to Japan myself. But, you know, you get to kind of, you get to see a little bit of those places through this. Kind of like being an armchair explorer. Uh, reading novels about going different places. It, it's fun, right? This is one of those basic games. You move down a path. You take the action of the space that you land on. You can move as far as you want, but you can never move backwards. Uh, and so it's great. It's great. I really like the, the art, the look of it, the appeal of it, the lightness of it. It's not a game that I, I love. It's not a game that I pull out all the time, but it has that great vibe to it. So I mentioned Ticket to Ride earlier. Of course I love Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride is great. Uh, it took me a long time to realize that the theme of Ticket to Ride is not actually about building like a, an empire, but it's a, uh, you know like a great company. It's about traveling. It's about having the coolest vacation. Uh, my favorite map pack for Ticket to Ride is Pennsylvania, UK. I think that that this is a really great box. It has a double-sided map. Pennsylvania is actually my favorite map of the game. UK is also pretty solid. Uh, so anyway, Ticket to Ride, great travel game. Moving on more, uh, this is more of a logistics game, but it is about traveling around. Uh, this, this is Switch and Signal. Switch and Signal has an A-side and a B-side map, uh, Europe or North America, 
And uh, I, I really like this one. This is more of a logistics puzzle of trying to get your trains into the right places. But it does have that fun thing where you're like, okay, we got to get this train, uh, breaker, breaker, got to get this train down here to Dallas to pick up that red cube and get it over there, out there to, uh, to San Francisco. What are we going to do here? We're going to, you know, move these, uh, you know, move these switches and these signals around and stuff so that they can get out there. <laughs> I like this game a lot. I really do. But, uh, and, and theme-wise, it's solid. It's super good. Get on board. This is a re-implementation of the uh, Japanese game Let's Make a Bus Route, which was hard to find for a little while. They kind of re... you know, th this is by Yellow, they reprinted it. I do like the new aesthetic a lot, but I also really like the original one. Uh, but anyway, this is a... <laughs> this is a bit of a roll and write style game. You flip over cards and you, and you draw bus routes out. In the original Let's Make a Bus Route, you drew them with, uh, with a, uh, a dry erase marker out on the shared board. In Let's Make a Bus Route, you use these wooden sticks and you create the bus route. I thought that I would really hate that. I don't actually mind that change very much. Um, at the end, there's a little bit more to clean up instead of just going, wipe. But, eh, but it's fun. It's, it's fun to see the routes build up. I really like this one. Uh, it does the bus thing really well and, and really simply. Voyages of Marco Polo. This is definitely about traveling. This is a fantastic dice placement game. Uh, one of the, you know, the, these, this Italian group of designers, I believe this one is Tashini Luciani, uh, I think that they do a great job when they team up together, and I like the different combos of designers that, that work together on different games. Marco Polo's so good. Place your dice out to take different actions, but one of the most important actions in the game is traveling. And so you want to travel around this map. It is not cheap. You gotta get a lot of money and a lot of camels if you want to travel. But it's so cool that as you visit different places along the, along the map, it unlocks special actions that you get to take, and it really differentiates you as you become more traveled in this game. So good. Really like Marco Polo. Next up, Blue Skies! Look at that cover! Uh, I like that cover, I like that aesthetic, I like that look. And then you see the game, and it's a bunch of spreadsheets! Ah! Rio Grand Games, what are you doing? You can make games look better than this. But this is a fun game. You're, these, are, these spreadsheets actually represent different gates, and so you're trying to open up gates in different cities. But because this game looks like this, this is way lower on the thematic, right? It does fit in my favorite theme of travel. And in fact, it fits it even better than some of these other games that I put. But because it does not evoke any feeling, any sensation of, ooh, I opened up a gate in Dallas! <laughs> uh, this game is really fun, though. It's also on Board Game Arena if you want to try it out without having to buy a spreadsheet. So, uh, lastly, let's talk about Free Ride. I like Free Ride. I like it a lot. I would like it better if, once again, if it had better graphic design. I've actually taken Sharpies and colored in my own copy of this because there's so many cities on this map! And there's cards that correlate to every city out in this huge market, and you really should have some sort of like shorthand of like, this card is in the green region in the top right of the map or something. But this is a great pickup and deliver game uh, as you are picking up passengers and delivering them to different places across Europe. It doesn't look like much at first. I mean, and the thing is, this sepia tone artwork is really great. There's a lot that's good looking about the game. But once you actually build up the train routes and stuff out there, it starts looking great, and as you, you have to physically move a train along these routes, uh, and it, as you move through routes that other people have built, you pay them, but then that route, like, like uh, if I move this blue train past this purple route here, then that purple control marker comes off, and now anybody can use that train line for free. There's some really great dynamics. This is one of my favorite Freedom and Freeze games that's come out uh, in quite a while. I think it's genuinely a great train game. It's too bad that they really botched it on the, on the, on the design. Maybe they're, I don't know, maybe they'll update it somehow. I really would love, uh, love to see that because I do like it. I think that this would be a good travel-themed game. Um, but I, I, I have a hard time recommending it unless you want to make an arts and crafts project out of it. Some people have made other, um, other ways. You put out cubes, you put out dice or something like that to indicate where cities are. But you've got to update that constantly. That's not... That's not what I want to do. But let's jump into another theme here. Like I said, my number three favorite theme is fun dinosaurs. Fun 
dinosaurs, because not just any dinosaurs, right? There's a, I, there's a couple of games, uh, Dinogenics, the theme didn't grab me. It was trying to be too serious, and, and uh, you know, it was a fun little dinosaur park building game. Sure, I liked it. But, I don't know, something about the, the uh, ooh, and the intense nature of it, didn't really, that theme didn't appeal to me. There's an area control game, 30 million BC, or Dino something, ah, I forget, there's, a, there's an area control game with dinosaur miniatures, and you're dinosaurs and you're fighting each other for areas, you know what I mean, kind of like a blood ragey type thing, but you're like, why are these dinosaurs working together like this? this you know, it pulled me out. So I like fun dinosaur themes, and you'll see what I mean. Some of these games are not necessarily, like, amazing games, but they're fun. This one, uh, BGG, board, www.boardgamegeek.com, here does say that it re-implements Dinosaur Island, and it's, it's sort of, but not really true. Dinosaur World, it shares some DNA, uh, but you are trying to make a, a, a park, a theme park with dinosaurs in it. I like it. It's a bit of a table hog, otherwise I think I would like it more if it was just like it streamlined a little bit, some of the bits chopped away, but... It is cool, and you do move your, your Jeep meeples around the park, uh, and you do have a fun time, you know, showing off and building new dinosaur pens and, uh, and drafting those sweet, sweet amber DNA dice. So it, it's good. It's good. It pulls off the, the dinosaur theme very well. But let's move on to one of my favorite dinosaur games, and it's one of the littlest. It's Draftosaurus. Draftosaurus is so adorable. Look at it! You're building up a little dinosaur park. Just a teeny one. You have these dinosaur meeples, and you get a handful of them. You draft one of them, you pick it, and then you pass the rest of them from your hand to the next player. And then you get a handful of dinos, you pick one, and then you pass those. And you actually just pass these little meeples. It's a, it's, it's, it's a gimmick. But it works. I like it. Anyway, you, you want to put them out into the park in different ways. You want to have lots of the same dinosaur, or lots of variety, or you want to try and collect, you know, lots of, uh, you know, you kind of determine what you're trying to go for. There is a little die roll that will restrict which animal pens you can put it into. Two-sided map. I really got to try the expansions. Oh, I haven't tried the expansions for this. What's wrong with me? Draft a source. I really love it. Dodo's Riding Dinos. This is a ridiculous game. Is it really dinosaur themed? Only kind of, kind of, sort of. It's, it's a, dinosaurs racing around. Why would they possibly be racing around? For fun, Chris. For fun. There's little dodos on the dinos. Ooh, someone painted up these minis. Ah! I love it. It is, uh, this is probably the best approximation of a battle cart racer, like Mario Kart kind of a thing, right? Where you are racing around this track and you can shoot bananas at each other and, and asteroids and stuff. It's, it's, it's got a very good, simple racing system where you can do damage to each other and move each other back and stuff, but it, it, it's, fun. it's fun. It's so much fun. Last thing, I'm going to talk about a game here that I don't know if I've heard anybody talk about, you know, besides like the initial review when it came out, and that's Rorosaurus. This is like a King of Tokyo type of a game, but real-time. I like this one a lot. This 8 here that I rated it is possibly a little bit inflated, but also it has something to do with the fact that I like fun dinosaurs. And so, you control these dinosaurs here. You're a one dino of a color. You have a few dice, and you're trying to roll combos on those dice. I think you roll five at a time or something like that. The back of the box will say, probably. You roll some dice, or maybe you have three of your dice or whatever, right? And if you get a certain combination, like three right punches, you get to punch the person on your right. If you roll three left punches, you get to punch the person on your left. If you get three healing symbols, you get to heal. Uh, and so, it's just a real-time game. Be the last dino standing. It's awesome! It's, it's a child's game, I understand, right? But I like it a lot. There's a slightly advanced version where you can even get upgrades and stuff, so you can make your ooh your right punch is better, and your kusus and your left punch is better. You can get a headbutt, and you can get armor. It's so silly. This game is so silly, but it's really enjoyable. If you're looking for a kid's game... Oh, there's the dinosaur faces right there, the die faces. If you're looking for a kid's game, dinosaurs, they don't mind, you know, they, they want to roar and chomp at each other, I really do recommend Roarosaurus for that, if you're okay with the absolute and utter silliness that that is. So anyway, that's my, uh, those are my picks there. 
for those two themes. I got one of these left. I hope that you're enjoying these. Hope that these are fun for you. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm going to end on a good note here. G flat. See what I did there? Anyway, I'm going to end on a, on a great note with my last video, so make sure to watch that one as it comes out. But until next time, thanks for coming by the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee. Have yourselves a great day.